I've gotten used to Pacific Northwest beaches, where sand means rocks and warm is just the cold that you've gotten used to. So when my mom came into my fifth grade classroom, told my teacher I was leaving early, walked us out to the car, and told me the family was taking a surprise cruise to the Bahamas, I had no idea the types of beaches I would see. It was easy to walk into the water, water that was only about 18 degrees cooler than my own body. My feet sunk lower until they were grounded by the seabed, and the tides crested against my hips. I allowed my body to move with its lung-like motion. Walking further in, it was easier to just fall into the water on my back, arms outstretched and feet pointed to the beach, and let the sea carry me, its rise and fall matching my breath. I opened my eyes when I felt the water stacking on top of my body. I lunged forward so I was upright. I couldn't tell if I was facing the beach. Every direction I spun, all I saw was blue. The sea swelled more the further from shore I was. I was stuck in the fetch, the pocket where the wind meets the sea, stirring the water into storm waves. I was forced underwater. My vision blurred to where it was worse to keep my eyes open. Salt water found its way in my nose and down my throat. With each push forward, I coughed up the sea. I moved my body as if I were swimming, but I stayed in the same place. I punched and kicked the sea away. Where was my family? When had I lost control? I couldn't see the blur of figures in the distance or even the blur of the sky touching the water. All I could make out was vast dark blue and white droplets flying toward my face. I called out for my mom, but I couldn't hear a call back. I was reminded of times when she forgot to pick me up from school, when she locked me out of the house and made dinner for one. I closed my eyes as if to wish away the stinging salt. I tried to open them again, but they were heavy, wanting to rest. I let them close, thinking maybe if I gave in, I would find my way back. I don't remember how I got to shore. I remember lying on the beach, the dry sand on my still wet body. My family was huddled around me, my cousin grabbing my hands, my aunt and uncle rubbing a towel across my arms and back. The three of them were speaking, maybe yelling at me, but all I heard was the muffled white noise of the sea still lingering in my ears. My mother was frozen, staring out to where I had been. For weeks, I found sand buried in my hair, belly button, and under my nails. I washed it from my body, each grain being a reminder of when I learned to be distrustful of the way things appear on the surface. The sea enveloped me in ways I thought I could handle, and in a snap, I was flailing to stay afloat. My family never spoke about what had happened, no matter how many times I asked how I got to shore and if I had died just for a moment. Being 10, I couldn't possibly understand how my time with the sea would return throughout my life. At 10, I wouldn't understand my mother's duality. All I would see were the long drives of the windows down and the radio up, and the times she would hide in her room for days, buried under blankets. I wouldn't know my dad would leave us, that he had another life he hid from us until he decided which one he wanted. I wouldn't know how eager I would be to leave my life behind and start over. When I go to the beach, I usually don't let the water rise above my knees. I'll stand before it and feel the waves brush against my body, a flood of everything I try to bury beneath the surface. And every once in a while, I'll pick up my heavy feet from beneath the seabed and take one more step in. Pack yourself a toothbrush, dear Pack yourself a favorite blouse Take a withdrawal slip Take all of your savings out Cause if we don't leave this town We might never make it out I was not born and drowned Baby, come on 